We respectfully request the Sangha grave virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach and guide us out and birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Hương thân đại đức tăng thân vì thứ pha Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sananto Shichedo Ye Lahudi San Miao San Puto Shi. Namo Dang Dakta Toya Daya Lahade Tam Yu Tam Bo Da Doa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma, a hundred thousand million aeons, is difficult to encounter. Now that I am able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Shang 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 Wei Miao Fa Bai Chien Wan Chien An Zao Yu O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, may Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Shen Hua, all good monks and nuns, and all good no advisors of me, Tofo. Chu Fo Pu Sa, Ching Liang Ta Shi, Shi Fu Shang Ren, Go Wei, Chu Chai Ren, Go Wei, Shang Chi Shi, Mi Tofo. O oh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Shen Hua, all good monks and nuns, and all good no advisors of me, Tofu. Okay, hello everyone. Today is the last day, New Year's Eve, here in the United States. Uh, we are saying goodbye 2023 and say hello 2024. Uh, and it's worth noting that it is already 2024 in Asia. Uh, to our friends and disciples in Korea, welcome. In Asia, welcome. Happy New Year to all of you. Yeah? Uh, all right. Yeah. I'm glad that all, you, all of you have come from far away to join us here and to be here at uh, our uh, first uh, Dharma lecture, last Dharma lecture of the year at uh, DTT. We moved to DTT now for the second half of the Chan Chi for the year. So welcome. Mm. I understand there are some videos for New Year's uh, or Old Year. Go ahead. Mm. 
Hey, no more cross.
Thank you very much. In particular, thank you for all of you for cultivating with us for this past year. And I'm very pleased that you didn't give up. It's um, very tough to cultivate here at BLI, at our various temples, but you held it together and you never quit. As a result, I'm so pleased that so many of you have improved. We've seen people now as commonplace for us to, for you old timers who have been able to hang around to be in the Ahat range. It is a big deal, trust me. It's a very, very big deal. Uh, it's scary actually for you lay people to be able to reach those levels because typically that's what uh, the monks and nuns uh, hope to achieve, that's it. Never mind about four-stage arhats. Uh, just you reach the positions with studies, meaning that first stage to third stage, meaning that you will automatically uh, become four-stage arhat in time. Nothing can stop you, okay? eventually you will get the fourth stage ahat. This, this is why it's such a big, big deal for all of you. I'm very, very pleased, okay? And also, our people also not only uh, reach many of you, uh, well, a few of you reach fourth stage ahat this year. A few of you, uh, uh, what is it? I don't remember anymore, but mm, few of you uh, improve when you are in the ground range, when you are in enlightened range, you will also improve to a higher grade. I'm very pleased with that, so please keep it up. Hmm? Okay, good job. Thank you all. And also, 
um, what we do is uh, not about ourselves. Uh, I think it's uh, very clear that those who are still around see it as something that we strike for, an ideal to improve ourselves so that we are better be able to make a difference in the world. Okay? And this is what we are about. And also tonight, uh, we moved our, op uh, our Chan Chi to DTT now, and behind me uh, is a new altar. It's all its uh, splendor, and how big it is. Never had a real altar before, so I'm very, very pleased. And we're here at DTT, and um, uh, let me tell you, it's been a real struggle for us. Uh, DTT, we purchased it something like uh, a year or two ago, I don't remember anymore. It's two years ago. Two years ago, can you imagine? Two years ago, we still are not fully operational yet. It's, uh, this is why uh, if you were to go into business, it's called uh, losing your shirt. <laughs> okay? uh, but uh, it's not about making money for us. We do, uh, we try our best and and uh, we um, have one problem after another, after another, it's nonstop. And so we close to maybe uh, openings next year, huh? Finally have a grand opening, huh? Master XG, pray to one Yin, huh? <laughs> uh, and uh, DDT marks a very big turning point for us. We're turning the corner. Mm, this is the first Pure Land Temple we have, real Pure Land Temple we have, to promote the Pure Land Dharma. We bring the American version of the Pure Land Dharma to America, to the world. Uh, when we talk about American version, meaning it's much improved, much more comprehensive, much more advanced than the Chinese version. Okay? So, I look forward to be, being able to do that and uh, benefit even far more people. Mm. All right, uh, any questions? Okay, uh, if not, then let's go into tonight's lecture. Uh, we are lecturing on the uh, first sutra, the first chapter of the Avatamsaka Sutra. Uh, we are currently on slide 436. The first chapter is about world rulers. Uh, these are the VIPs, the big shots in the worlds. We've been studying, studying this sutra for over a year now, I'd say. Huh? Uh, first chapter, uh, one year. Usually, the people would uh, read through the chapter within a few months at the most. Hmm? Uh, we've been discussing it very uh, thoroughly, and uh, I'm still learning a lot. We're all learning a lot, so thank you for uh, participa participating. Hmm. As I was walking over here, a thought, I have a false thought. I asked myself, since I'm lecturing on the world rulers, and you know what they are. The world rulers are the rulers of the various heavens. Uh, these are Mahasattvas who are really, really big shot. Uh, the current section is about the world, world rulers in the Six Isaiah Heaven, which is uh, where the heavenly demons live. And hone the skills so that they have a chance to go and destroy and screw up everything else in the world. And then we send our Mahasattva, these world rulers are all Mahasattvas. No two ways about it. And uh, we send them over to rule over the troublemakers. Isn't that fascinating? Hmm? And so I thought about it, I said, you know, since no one ever asked me this question, so I, I'm going to ask you this question, okay? How do you become a rural ruler? Anyone ever thought about it? You know, kids grow up, 
aspiring to become presidents, become scientists, become Nobel laureates, and so forth. No one ever is taught to become a world rulers. World rulers are very, very important beings. Okay, uh, they uh, keep things under control. Okay, otherwise it would be chaos. So the question is, how do you become a world rulers? And I hope that if you keep in mind this in mind, then maybe we maybe should make a vow to become a rural ruler ourselves in the future when we become Mahasattvas. How's that? I hope you, many of you will become world rulers. No, you're not impressed. Never mind. Okay. Uh, so the Buddhists, uh, you know, the small timers aspire to be presidents and so forth. Uh, we Mahayana people want to become world rulers. That's uh, that uh, would be a nice milestone in our cultivation. Yeah? So have you thought about it? Since we've been studying them, learning about them, we've been learning what they're about, what they're known for, and what they're skilled at doing, how they became enlightened, and so forth. So the question is, how did they become a world ruler? Never cross your mind? Not even curious? Hmm? What do you think? Yes, nine. Uh, thank you, Master. I, I guess um, by developing the samadhi and the blessings and the connection to uh, living beings, they can become world rulers. Okay, developing samadhi. For sure, these are mahasattvas. They're very high level of samadhis and wisdom. For sure, that's part of the requirements. The job requirement says you have, a ma you have to be a mahasattva, not just a mahasattva, but high level mahasattva. For example, Mashi uh, Shuyun is a mahasattva, but he's a low level mahasattva. Okay, he would not qualify. He had to be a high-level Mahasattva. Is that clear? No two ways about it. You don't qualify unless you are good enough, you are strong enough to bear the burden of the world. All right? What else? How do you become a world ruler? Hmm? I know many of you say, I'm just trying to get a job. I'm trying to get my job done, get a promotion. You're thinking too small. This is what your problem is. Never dare think big. Okay? You are the ones who are limiting yourself. All you think you could think of for yourself is you think small. You say, oh, this is more manageable for you, for me. But actually, what makes a huge difference is that you need to set your goals properly. You think small, you set your goals are too small, and then that's all you're gonna get. Okay? So how do you become a world ruler? Yes. What's the number is that? Three. Three. You have to be able to help a lot of people, the whole world of people. You have to be able to help a lot of people, okay? Yeah, that's, uh, we're talking about samadhi power, strength, wisdom, to carry them on your back, okay? What else? Many, let me assure you, there are many Mahasattvas who are able to do that. Many, many of them. How do you become a rural ruler? Ha, ha, ha. The end of the year in the United States, 2023. I gave you a curveball. You don't know how to hit this out of the ballpark. Huh? Good thing I thought about this before you thought about this question and asked me. And I would be, oh, 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 let me think about it. Yeah? Go first. How do you become a world ruler? Uh, hello, Master. I think you applied for the job before the Buddhas. 
You apply for what? For the job. Before the you apply for a job. Sensible. And, and sir, uh, where do I apply again? You have uh, an address, like a mail or a website, I could uh, fill out the application form? No, I don't. <laughs> you don't? Okay, okay. So the point is you have to apply for a job. Reasonable, yes, three. You, you apply by making a vow to become world ruler? Making a vow, absolutely. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You need to have ambition. You need to say, this is what I want to do because I feel it's challenging, okay? And then not just wanting, making a vow is more Buddhist. It's a vow to make it happen, okay? Hmm. All right? You make a vow. Yes, all these people in the past made vows to become a world ruler. Okay? Anything else? So did many people. There are people who also made vows. Would you like to make a vow? No? Uh, yeah? What else? What are? How do you become a world ruler? Yes, the lady in the back, give her a microphone. Yes. Two. Amitofo, uh, we need to have a lot, many, many blessings. Lots of blessings, absolutely. These war rulers, they breathe fire. They cut people's head just like that, okay? And you get in the way, they crush you. Okay, and they can get whatever they want in the world. They own it. They really own the world. That's why they rule over it, because they own it. Okay? Mm. Very good. How do you become a world ruler? You're getting closer and closer. Very, very good. Yeah? Do that. I see your collective wisdom, our collective wisdom. Huh? What do you think? Any uh, bright ideas? See, we have children here. Let's, let's um, incubate them with the proper ambitions. Yeah? Yeah, you know, as they're playing around, it's, they're hearing, world ruler, world ruler, I want to become a world ruler. I make a vow and become a world ruler. There you go. There's in their, in their eighth consciousness already. Yes, eight. She says, I told my husband to become a world ruler. <laughs> yes, Master. Oh, oh, 지금 세상에 우두머리신 분들을 도움으로써 세상에 우두머리가 될수 있다고 생각합니다. Okay, that sounds important. Go ahead, translation. We cannot hear Sarah. Hi. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, translate. Now translation comes from Korea. <laughs> so you guys are incredible. You know, uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are incredible. Yeah, it's incredible yes, what you piece together. Uh, yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, Helping the current world ruler is planning for the future, becoming a future ruler. Sorry, one more time, please. <laughs> Try to help the current world ruler. It mm. will help us to become a future world ruler. Wow, this lady is clever. She goes uh, inside the information. <laughs> yeah, very clever. I like that. Hmm, so Korean. Anyone else? That's an option. Yes, absolutely. I like that. I never thought of it. It's so sneaky. Anyone else? How do you become a world ruler? 
I'm challenging you. Come on, use your collective wisdom. Would you like some more time to discuss it among our, yourselves? Break up into small groups, yeah? Yeah, in the back. Thank you, Master. We have an answer from YouTube. YouTube. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Master. And I'd like to say a special thank you and sincere gratitude to our YouTube audience joining us on New Year's Eve. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Derek says, perform great deeds. Perform great deeds. Well, you all have been performing great deeds, too. Very good. By the way, I'm impressed with the sound. The sound here is pretty good. Hmm? Slightly better than Wei Mao. Excellent job. Yes, anyone else? Are you running out of ideas? Time is running out. Yeah? Anyone? The Koreans, they're so happy with the new year. They're so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah? Look at that. It's amazing, and the first year in Korea, and this is today, is Monday for them. And they're up, okay, and uh, studying the Dharma. How is that? That's a good way to become a world ruler in the future. Hey, Shen Yun. Shen Yun, Would you like to become a world ruler? <laughs> She's trying to be Shen Yun. <laughs> Okay. You give up? Say it. Master, you ask the question, so you answer for us. Just say it. Huh? Ah, let me give you some clues. Would you like some clues, or would you like me to give you the answer straight away? Either way is fine with me. Clues? Clues, clues, clues? The children want clues, but the adults, they don't want clues. They want nothing. <laughs> They're not answering you. <laughs> oh, look at all these things. Huh? It's so cool. Huh? Look at that. All oh, this Dharma seat. I never had a nice Dharma seat like this before. Hmm. I think I like it here. Huh? We like it here. Okay, clues. Okay. Hmm. Usually, the leaders in our worlds are elected. Yes? So is this an election here? Is that you become a world ruler by election? Yes or no? Huh? See, it's unveiling it for you. Huh? Slowly and slowly. Is this an election? We have an election year coming up next year. This is what came to mind. Yeah? Is it? Are they elected? Yes or no? Yes, sir, in the back. Have no YouTube thing uh, notices? Th thank you, Master. No, I'll, I'll speak for myself on this answer. All right, speak. I do not believe that world rulers would be elected. Why not, sir? I believe it takes too much samadhi power and blessings for someone to achieve world ruler status to rely on a ballot box. To rely on what? to rely on a ballot box to appoint them. Rely on ballots. Ah, okay. Rely on ballots to appoint them. What you're saying, may I paraphrase it as, how can we allow stupid people to elect world rulers? Oh, well, that would not be incorrect, Master. That's not quite what I'm saying, though. <laughs> Thank you. You think it would work if we allow people who don't know 
If people cannot tell the difference between this person and the next person in terms of somebody power, how can we allow them to, to vote for? Right? Number one. Number two, our leaders, the leaders in our world, are chosen because of the election system and they need money to run the election. So the system in itself, okay, is corrupt. Okay, it's corruptible. Can we afford to have these important positions, these decision makers who affect the welfare of our families and our future be corruptible? Because these war rulers are Mahasattvas. You think Mahasattvas, in order to become a, a world ruler, need to go and, uh, and uh, solicit votes from uh, the uh, unwise? That wouldn't work, would it? Right? So therefore, it cannot be the, the typical election system we have, okay? Where we depend on what we call democracy will actually is subject to corruption and manipulation. This is a system built upon wisdom. See, it's a very important distinction for you to be mindful of, to remember, okay? Uh, it's, it's not the same as our so-called democracy, republic or whatever, okay? Or uh, we have a, an emperor who then gives it to his son and so forth, you know, by, by bloodline. It's, it's, the system has to be built upon wisdom, yes? And therefore, these people are selected. Could be by election. If it's by election, there should be a committee of people who are talented, who have the wisdom to recognize them and possibly the experience to recognize that they are very competent. Do we agree on this? So this is a special election, if there is any election at all. Yes? All right. Okay, you have to say something? And don't get distracted by her. She's, you know, yeah, it's her false thoughts. That manifests like this. <laughs> okay, so how do you become a world ruler? Is it an election? Yes, five. 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 어 거리를 계속 청소를 하고 많은 사람들을 같이 청소를 할수 있게끔 도와줘서 계속 청소를 하고 청소를 하고 청소를 했는데 그 다음 생에 그런 전륜 상황으로 태어났다라는 그런 이야기를 들은 적이 있습니다. 그래서 제가 생각했을 때는 어 다른 사람도 함께 복을 지울 수 있도록 도와주고 스스로도 희생을 하는 사람이 그런 전륜 상황이 되지 않나 우두머리가 되지 않나 싶습니다. Master, I think I heard this before. It might be another Buddha Buddha time. Uh, there was this man who cleaned streets. He cleaned the streets and clean it and clean it. And he also helped other people to clean the street, not only by himself. So he reborn and became world ruler. So I thought, based on this story, uh, if you are able to help others and accumulate bless, if you help others so they could accumulate the blessings and then sacrifice himself, they could become the world rulers. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And that's a part of the selection process. Yes. But how does this person get appointed to this position? 
That's what we're trying to understand. Yes, Chuin Sunim, who's on his, uh, what day now? 16th day? 16th day, Master. Wow, look at that. What happened at Jeju Island? Jeju Island is probably too busy celebrating. Jeju Island, he's coming for your record. <laughs> Encourage him. Cha yo, cha yo, ya, ya, ya. Hang in there. Hang in there. <laughs> okay. What do you think? Actually, the Buddha introduced him. Buddha appointed this person. Excellent. Let me explain to you. They may be world rulers, but who do they work for? You thought about it? Seeing our democracy, our so-called democracy, the presidents, the elected officials work for the people, yeah? That's the system that we call democracy, okay? You go into a autocracy, who do they work for? They work for themselves. Yeah? Okay? But, but, uh, you go back a little bit deeper, how, which world are we talking about? Is it Sahara world? If it's a Sahara world or Pure Land, Western Bliss Pure Land, or Medicine Master Buddha's Pure Land, or another Buddha's Impure Land, so forth. The land, the Buddha land, has an owner. Am I making sense to you? I'm no Buddha, but this is my reasoning. If you be one become a world ruler here in Saha world, just to simplify things, just to fix things, who owns the Saha world? Who created the Sahara world? Who is a creator? Daniel would say, God Almighty. What happened to Daniel? Is Daniel here? <laughs> In, we won't. See, as soon as I leave, Apple and Daniel don't show up anymore. <laughs> Only Morale and his mom. <laughs> uh, okay? Uh, so, The Sahara world was created by the Buddha. All right? I mean, uh, the Shakyamuni Buddha. In the Western Bliss Pure Land, that world was created by Amitabha Buddha. For what purpose? To save living, living beings. So whatever it takes to save living beings, Amitabha Buddha would be overseeing it, yeah? Same thing here. Shakyamuni Buddha, right now, he may not be around, he may be dead, but he's still overseeing this world because it's his. He's using this to save living beings. And therefore, therefore, if you were a world ruler in a Saha world, he's good God, who do you work for? You work for the Buddha. Agree? Who else? He owns it. He's the owner. It's like the NFL team owner. No, you don't watch NFL. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Soccer, oh, soccer, soccer team owner and so forth. Okay. So the owner appoints people to the various important positions to make sure that the world functions accordingly as planned. Isn't that interesting? I want you to be aware of it because in spite of all the manifestations of the world going to the, you know, in decay and so many problems and so forth, 
Okay, this is a new year's, new, new message for you of hope. It's under control. It's being supervised, overseen by our Buddha. You gotta have faith. Things happen for a reason. And the one thing that is universal, if you do good, you improve. You get up there. No two ways about it. Because the Buddha is going to make it happen, going to see to it that it will happen. Have faith. Does it make sense? It's much bigger than you think than yourself, in your small world, is, I'm so important, I'm number one. No, the Buddha is number one. We all work for him. All right? Mm -hmm. Agree or disagree? <laughs> He's so insincere, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Let's go back to 436. This is towards the end of the verses that were spoken by uh, these war rulers in their, their, who are actually demon kings, okay? Mm. 436, the myriad assemblies behold it clearly, flower wisdom enters this passage to liberation. All right, what are the myriad assemblies beholding it? Beholding what, clearly? It's they're beholding the thus come one self-mastery, which cannot be measured. This is the prior, the prior text, the prior verses, which fills the entire space uh, and the Dharma realm. So it's referring to the fact the Buddha is completely at ease in the entire Dharma realm. Okay, what does it mean when it fills the entire Dharma realm? It means that because the Buddha, think about this perspective. Let me present to you from this perspective. If the Buddha uh, has self-mastery, meaning he's complete at ease, okay, throughout the Dharma realm, never mind about, never mind about Dharma realm, how about our realm? our world, our Saha world. You know, his self-mastery is at ease, is filling up our world. All right? Which means what? Uh, which means that, uh, and, it's, and the verses then uh, followed and they said, it fills the entire Dhamma, the, this entire Dharma realm, and the myriad assemblies can see it clearly, meaning that the assemblies in our world can see it, in the other worlds can see how the Buddha's at ease and self-mastery spirit fills up their world. That's what it means. Is that clear? They may not be able, these myriad assemblies may not be able, they have a range. They can see that there, there's this sense of at ease, this feeling of at ease in their area. They can see it. It's an energy of at ease thing. Okay? And, and this is fantastic news for us because uh, this flower wisdom mm -hmm. certified to it. He saw it. And he says, not only can I see it, the myriad assemblies also see it as well. So it's great news because how does it, what, how does it affect us? That there's a at ease energy 
through our world that was created by the Buddha's energy. And if you tap into it, you can also feel at ease. This is why we practice samadhi. We practice chan to tap into it. All right? There's a way to tap into it. All right. Next. Uh, Four thirty-eight. Throughout oceans of countless, boundless great aeons, Buddhas manifest everywhere in the ten directions to speak the Dharma. 无量无边大劫海, Okay, uh, and so um, uh, here uh, we're learning, this is again eye-opening experience for us. You want to open your mind because your mind is so limited. Your mind, our minds are bounded by what we know. Okay, so the Avatamsaka Sutra, what's good about this sutra is that it tells us about things that are called inconceivable, meaning things that our conscious mind cannot conceive of. Okay? You can try your best and try to understand, but you can't. That's why it's called inconceivable. Okay? So what he's talking about here is that the timelines. Okay? You only think about plotting, scheming for yourselves, for your lifetime, try to become successful, try to become famous, try to make money, try to get what you want this lifetime, and you devote all your energy, all your resources to do that. Okay? Whereas you should understand that this also is the past that brought you here, Whatever you're doing here also affects what's going to happen to you in the future. So the timeline is very, very important. You cannot think small. Think about only this lifetime. That's too small. And that's why this sutra is helping you understand that. Okay? Uh, you have to think longer terms, if you will. Don't invest all your resources, resources in this lifetime in a form of make it or break it alone. It's not enough. All right? So for example, uh, before, uh, before this Chan uh, Chi uh, here, before it started in November or so, uh, one of my long-term disciples, mm, and she'd been a Buddhist disciple for a long, long time. And she followed many, many masters. And of course, as typical, you go to this temple, you learn, and then you move on to the next temple and so forth. That's uh, what Buddhist disciples do. And so uh, she's very, now she decided to follow us and say, well, uh, I think uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stop. Mm. Uh, wandering around, I'm going to follow your teachings. So she said, so what do I do? I said, don't pressure me like that. Continue to wander around. I'm not, I don't mind. He says, no, no, no. I want you to tell me what to do. Okay? And I said, uh, I said, how old are you? He says, I'm pretty old. I'm a little bit older than you. Well, I said, in that case there, mm. then I cannot speak for you, but let me speak for myself. I have an expiration date. Yeah? So I would, and it's, it's getting near, so I would be thinking about my future, believe it or not. Hmm? You, you cannot think of, you know, after I die, and that's it. It's not that way. You have to think beyond after you die. What's going to happen to me? What do I want to happen to me? 
Yeah. When you were younger, when your children are younger, you invest in their future, didn't you? You send them to fancy schools. I heard the schools here are very expensive. It's well worth it, I'm pretty sure. But we all parents, out of love, invest in our children's future because they need it. They need the investment. Otherwise, you know, they, they, cannot, they cannot fend for, yourself, for themselves yet. Okay, so we invest in the future, yeah? And that's how it's so helpful for our children, for our nieces and our nephews and so forth, okay? That's what happened to us. My parents invested in me and it helped me, got to get started, all right? So, so we have to think differently. You can't think that I have an expiration date and world, worldly people said, okay, so I die. So I might as well, you know, uh, retire and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, invest in, a st in the stock funds and, and hire a financial planner and make sure I, you know, I have enough money until the day I die. And because you think like that, because your planning horizon is too short. So you have to plan beyond that. This is what we're talking about. You have to think there's a, there's a, it matters after you die. So she says, well, you know, then what do you want me to do? I said, how about investing in your future? You have an expiration date, most likely you die before I do. So invest in your future. Hmm? She said, how do I do that? He says, but is it master blessings? I said, that still has an expiration date. Hmm? So I said, invest in a property in the Pure Land. <laughs> she liked it. You go to the Pure Land, it's forever, folks. And that's why you have, to, this is why these sutras are very important because it helps you understand there's a, there is planning to do beyond our deaths. Okay? And we need to plan smartly. Don't just think, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plan for my life here on this earth until I die, I'm successful, I become president or I con people, or scam people, or I get away with it, it's okay. But you know, it still matters because after we die, okay, it still will catch up with us, okay? Similarly, if we do good things right now and plan for the future, it will multiply in the future. And that's why I told my disciple, I said, you know, instead of leaving your money and all the things uh, for your children to fight over and argue over and say, mommy has not been fair to me and she, she favors you and so forth. Why don't you consider taking care of them, make sure they're okay, but whatever uh, that you think you well, done enough for them, how about investing in your future? Invest in the pure land. Oh, she loved it. That's my advice to you as well. Hmm? You have to think beyond you, your expiration date. And that's because there's a future after this. Does it only apply to old people? There's a sense of urgency for old people. Well, that applies to young people as well. Think about it. Yeah? It's like we retire, right? We are told by our financial planners, put, save away 5%, 10% of our salary so that by the time we get the retirement age, you have a nest egg and we can be comfortable. Hmm? That's still too short of a planning horizon. And that's why, that's why when you do Chan, 
Aren't you investing in your future lives as well? Huh? Remember, if this lifetime you reach first stage ahat, let's be specific, first stage ahat, let's say lower too, first stage ahat, meaning that in seven more lifetimes, after you die, you go to the heavens, you come down to the human realm seven times, like this, and you will become a fourth day jahat automatically. Nothing can stop it. So your cultivation right now, isn't it investing in your future? Isn't your making the effort to reach first stage ahat, second stage ahat, is actually planning for your future as well, your current life? See, you have to think smarter. Worldly people didn't know that, don't know that. That's why they, okay, all they can think of is that, you know, retirement, retirement, Bahamas, red car, and all those things. Those are losers. Wait, <laughs> doesn't sound good. You got that? Okay. So, our John here is planning your future. Well, I'm also suggesting to you, unless you become enlightened, which is like an incredible feat, okay, well, you should plan to go to the Pure Land. That's planning for your future. And if you plan to go to the Pure Land, buy land. I'm told by my financial planner, master, buy land. Yeah? Got that? That's smart because of the timeline here. You have to think further and further than worldly people thinking. Does it help? Hmm? It doesn't stop here. It doesn't stop after you die. He has a future that you need to plan for. Now you can do something about it through your cultivation. And also by investments. And in the future, we might come up with something that pays dividends too from the pure land. I haven't, I don't know anything that pays pure lands and dividends yet, so we'll see. Got that? All right? So this is, this is so important. This is, you have to, this is why we're learning about these things. Boundless, countless great eons. People, the first reaction is that, nonsense, these Buddhists are crazy. It's so far away, so why does it matter? It matters because you know that life continues after death. Yeah? You need to plan for it. You need to invest in yourself. Don't wait for your parents to invest in you. You can be in control right now for your future. Yeah? Jumi, you agree? Talk to your husband. And uh, that's next line, Buddhas manifest everywhere in ten directions to speak the Dharma. Go ahead, JC. Master, 안녕하세요. 질문 드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 그 어제 그 보라 선언에 다녀왔다가 어 와이프가 지금 그 단식 중에 있어가지고 제가 좀제예제 이제 딸을 데리고 좀 물러나야지 와이프가 원활하게 단식을 할수 있을 것 같아서 제가 보라 선언 도령에서 어 일찌감치 좀 나왔습니다. 여기까지 어 해석 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 맞습니다. Master, this is from Kwang Ho. So yesterday I went to JC and my wife is doing fasting. So I thought try to help her. I took my daughter and left early from JC. Yeah. 
지금 마스터께서도 방문을 작년에 하셨었고 아 올해 올해인가 작년에 하셨었고 아, 장, 아, 자, 아 죄송합니다 작년에 그 방문을 하셨었고 거기 주사 가셨던 이제 묘음 큰 스님이라는 분은 어, 비구니 스님은 어, 깨달음을 얻으신 분이라고 또 말씀을 하셨던 그런 도량회를 제가 집 근처이기 때문에 갔습니다. 도량에서 이제 그 어, 잠깐 이제 어, 도량에서 이제 머물다가 어, 능엄주도 하고 이렇게 잠깐 머물다가 이제 가는데 이제 물러나려고 하는데 그거 도량 주차장에서 어, 담배를 태우는 어, 사람이 있었습니다. So stay at this way place and I recite s h r a n g a m a mantra and on the way um, exiting from the temple I saw a person who's smoking. 그 예전 같으면 제가 사실 좀 이렇게 그좀 일종의 그 나대는 성격이 좀 있어가지고 방문해서 이런 도량에서 담배를 피시면 안 됩니다라고 이렇게 말을 할수 있었을 텐데 어 마스터께서 이제 육조단경 강설 하실 때 이럴 때 다른 사람의 과오를 보지 말고 너 자신을 보고 어 다른 사람의 과오는 그들의 어 과오기 때문에 어 유념해 주지 말고 너 자신을 봐라라는 그 가르침이 떠올라서. 어, 따로 이제 소위 말하는 지적지는 안 하고 그냥 이제 지나갔습니다. So, if I was just go by the way I was before, I probably said, please do not smoke. But since I learned from you from six patriarch lectures, you told us that see my fault and their fault is mine and focus on, on only my fault. So I didn't say anything to him. 그래서 이제 지나가는데 또 다른 20대 그 사람들이 담배를 또 태우고 있었습니다. 남녀 한 3명이 담배를 태우고 있었습니다. So I passed by, I saw 20s young people smoking about three people, man and woman. 그래서 저는 생각이 아, 두량이 이게 오염이 될 건데 아, 이거를 그냥 간과해도 괜찮은가라는 생각이 들었는데 그래도 어, 나 자신의 과오를 보자고 얘기를 안 하고 이제 차를 몰고서 지나갔습니다. 근데 저는 생각이 어 이제 다른 사람의 과오를 보지 말고 저 자신을 이제 보는 연습을 하는 건데 어 그런 이런 어떤 도량을 좀 이렇게 담배 연기로 오염시키는 경우에는 어느 정도 이제 다가가서 이제 공손하게 좀 말씀을 드려야 되는 거 아닌가라는 약간의 이제 후회 후회라고 해야 되나 약간의 좀 아쉬움이 남았습니다. 그래서 제가 여쭤고 싶은 거는 이런 어떤 좀 특수한 도량에 약간의 좀 해가 가는 경우에도 어저 자신의 과오를 보고 어 그냥 이제 스쳐 가게 하는 게 맞을지 아니면은 어 공손하게 다가가서 이제 공손하게 좀 말씀을 정중하게 드려야 되는 게 이제 선업 선업이 되는 게 아닐지 여쭤고 싶습니다. So I just uh, passed this 20s young people and then again I thought about looking at my focusing on my fault. So I was driving and then a thought arise And I was thinking, should I just talk to them? Maybe I could tell them politely, do not smoke, because that's not a good thing for the temple, especially for way places. So my question is, there's a situation like this if people smoking around temple, and I think that I believe that that's not, that's not really helping the temple, I'd rather harming the temple. Should I just uh, ignore them, just focus on my own faults, Or should I just gently approach them and just talk to them and advise them not to smoke? Uh, is, is that considered as a good act? Thank you. Okay. Uh, just because people are wrong doesn't mean that we are entitled to tell them they're wrong. When people are wrong, embrace them, accept them. Don't have to judge them. It's okay. Mm. You see that these young people are, are smoking. It's not about the temple. Honestly, from a temple perspective, it doesn't matter. It can't really hurt the temple. 
they're hurting themselves. Okay? And that's why you should embrace it and feel compassion for them instead of judging them. Uh, when people are wrong, uh, so wrong, you have to learn to embrace them, accept them, and not judge them because they're hurting themselves already. You don't need to hurt them anymore. You don't need to punish them. It is so wrong for us to say, uh, because you're smoking, meaning you're violating the number one, number five rule of uh, the our morality precepts, therefore you're a bad person. No, it's for us, it's not for anyone else. If they are violating those things, they kill people, they cheat people, uh, you should not judge them, you should feel sorry for them. Okay? Mm. And don't say anything. It's none of your business, okay? Uh, they are harming, they're hurting enough themselves already, so we don't need to add oil to the fire. Embrace them, okay? That's number one. Number two, the reason you ask, the reason you feel like uh, that you brought up this question is because it bothers you. That's cultivation. Cultivation is where we, the way we we cultivate is you know, to be humble. Don't judge others to be humble, okay? Look at our faults is to be humble. And so uh, part of that process is that it bothers you to see these people are violating the rules and regulations of the temple, okay? And therefore you're afflicted by that. Because you're afflicted by that, you should not do anything and endure the affliction. That's the cultivation. It bothers you, you shut up. You don't say anything. You don't do anything. You don't show frowning in your eyes and, and have a dismissing uh, look in your face. That's not cultivation. Cultivation is ru ru putong, meaning that uh, you Thus, thus, you are thus, thus unmoving. Even though they scream at you, they blow f smoke in your face, <coughs> but you still ru ru putung, meaning you're not afflicted at all. Okay? And you endure it. They call you, they slander you, they beat you up, you still ru ru putung. Okay? All right? That's cultivation. And that's all that matters. Oh that whatever they, these young people do, well, they will get their dues, they get what we all get, what we deserve. So don't worry about them. Use them to further your cultivation. Stop judging them. Yes, Korean, you too. This question is from Ipa Kipajun. So this person's sister um, committed suicide and request 49 days. So they're wondering, the family's wondering if uh, what happened to this sister since they request for the 49 days. Thank you. If they, I'm sorry. And then if, if the, the sister went to a good place, they like to know. Thank you. How long ago? So it just about two or three days ago, 49 days was over. Over. Mm. So uh, I don't want to make this turn this into a habit because it causes problems for my peers, for my colleagues. Because I don't want you to go to the temple and request a 49 day service and at the end of the service and said, What happened to my sister? What happened to my father? What happened to my grandma? 
okay? It causes a lot of stress for the monks and nuns because what are they going to do? They, if they don't know how to answer you, now you put them in a bad spot. Hmm? Okay, so please stop doing that. Hmm. Um, that's why, that's one of the major reasons why my master never allowed uh, his disciples to do the 49-day service at the city of 10,000 Buddhas for this very reason. Because it happened already. It happened to uh, the f friend of uh, Xian Xin's brother who killed himself. And then uh, his friend, this lady here, who's a disciple at the CTTV as well, disciple of Master Xuanhua, uh, came to me and said, so you claim that he went to the Pure Land. Uh, I don't believe you. She went to this uh, senior monk at uh, Master, disciple Master Xuanhua and said, that, that monk claimed that uh, this guy went to the Pure Land. Okay, he, the guy here, his, uh, the, the guy went to the temp your temple to support you as well. He's been here. Uh, he's a disciple of the association. He's a Qin generation. Did he go or not? So basically she was, she was trying to find out if I scam her or not, scam the family or not. And they put so much pressure on the monk. So what did the monk do? He says, don't talk, don't look at the past, look for the future. See, you put pressure on people, what are they going to do? They can't tell you that, I don't know, and then you're going to lose faith in them. Okay, so please, all of you disciples, Buddhist disciples, stop doing that. I'm sorry that in the past I op opened my big mouth and, and told a lot of people this and that because uh, they were afflicted and so forth, okay? And so I'm going to do less and less of that from now on because I realize that uh, I'm more visible now. And before, I was just uh, uh, open a big mouth and no one took me seriously, so I had to speak say a lot of things to establish a pure land dharma door, okay? And that we're different. We're not Chinese style. We're not Asian style. We're American style. And we're different. We do a lot more. And therefore, I, need to, I needed to explain a lot to my disciples. And throughout the last 15 years we've been doing this, there's a track record already of all uh, these people we helped. Okay, and uh, they have uh, plenty of confirmations that they were they made it and so forth. And I confirmed it for them to help them understand you know, the difference between Chinese and American pure land dharmas. But from now on, I will no longer public give you public answers because it causes problems for my peers. What are you going to do now? Okay. Uh, because uh, it happened recently too. There's a, there's a person, a Vietnamese woman, who came to my temple about uh, two, three months ago, and her uh, uncle, who is a very good Pure Land practitioner, very nice man, very kind, and so forth, uh, died. Uh, and uh, so she was, she was, um, she referred to us and she was convinced by us, by our people, to ask me to do the 49-day service for her uncle. So I did. And she came back and said, you know, I, I, um, I can't, uh, I can't, uh, prom uh, I can't uh, fulfill my promise to you. Uh, and therefore, you do whatever you do to, to help uh, my uncle, if, uh, if, uh, and then that's it. Yeah. Okay? And then, uh, and then the other people stepped up in our temple. The one who referred her to, to me stepped up and said, okay, uh, we will we'll take care of the shortfalls that she, uh, she could not uh, fulfill. So they took care of that. And now it's the end of the period. So she went to another temple, another Vietnamese temple who specializes in Pure Land, unlike us. 
we specialize in everything, not just pure land. Hmm. And the guy said, the monk says, your uncle appeared in my dream and he asked me for help. So she came back to me and said, is that true? You finished the 49 day for, for, for my uncle. Is that true? So now she's pitting his word against mine. So my answer is, I will not tell you. As soon as you abandon that thing there, you're no longer entitled to know. And so she asked the people who help her to ask me. I said, I'm not going to tell you either <laughs> because you cannot put me in position to pit my words against that Vietnamese monk's words. So I won't tell you either. Before I used to tell you all these things uh, to help you understand the difference between our American Pure Land Dharma versus the Vietnamese, the Chinese, and so forth, Tibetan, and so forth. I'm not telling you in this case. Forget it. You see? Uh, Please don't, don't ask publicly. I will not tell you. In this case here, because of the conflict with that monk here who claimed to see that uh, basically he's saying that I scammed the family, I'm not going to answer that either. Okay? Uh, he's a respected monk, and I will, the last thing I want to do is to make him lose face or do anything to harm his image. It's not good for, for our Sangha. We're both part of the Sangha. The Sangha has good monks and bad monks, but we would never, I would never purposely try to harm someone's image. Okay, I got here today because of all those monks, good and bad. I'm grateful for that. And the last thing I want to do is cause problems for you, for any, um, any of them. Seven. So, I'm, uh, so uh, if uh, what we try to do is to help uh, people go to the Pure Land, and we're proud of, the, of our track record, if you believe it, then come and, and uh, we'll, be trying, we'll be glad to help you. If you don't believe it, it's okay. Go to another temple, but don't ask me. Okay? Uh, I will tell you when, because there is a teaching point, not because I'm trying to um, impress or make other uh, people look bad. It's never my intention. Yes, in the back, seven. Bojangsai do chagul hagu, chega han samil tong do chinasil te, ah, yoginun dega. 온, 내가 내복으로 올수 있었던 것이 아니다라는 인사이트가 있었는데 그날 또 마침 법문 내용이 우리들이 복이 없기 때문에 불보살님이 어, 여러분들에게 복을 줘야 된다라는 법문의 내용이 먼저 나왔었습니다. 일단 여기까지. When I arrived in DTT, about three days later, I start to uh, realize that um, I came here not because of my blessing, but I remember on that day, there was a Dharma talk. You said, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas help us with their blessings. Uh, actually, so after Master Z left Korea, my husband and myself planned that we're going to move to Seoul the way we planned. And I cried so much after Master Z left because in this life, I'm never going to see him again. That's, that was my thought. <laughs> 어 이제 저, 저, 그러니까 결론적으로 제가 여기 DTT에 올수 있었던 건어 보산사에 계신 올드에비 덕분에 그 올드에비 씨의 복수로 제가 여기에 올수 있었고 일단 여기서 한번 
네, 네. In conclusion, the reason I was able to make to DTT, I believe because because of the old abbot um, at JNT, because of his blessing, I was able to make it to DTT. 그리고 여기 와서는 마스터의 복으로 제가 여기 있을 수 있는 것 같습니다. After I arrive at DTT, I I'm able to stay here because of Master Z's blessing. Thank you. 어 제가 노수님 바로 뒤에 앉아서 노수님이 한국에 와 주셔서 감사하다라는 말씀을 단한 번도 드리지 못했어요. 뭐 바로 뒤에 앉아가지고 뭐 감사하다 이렇게 얘기한 게좀 쑥스럽기도 하고 근데 이제 또 감사하다는 말을 노수님께 붙이기는 감사라는 단어가 너무 싸고 어 가볍게 느껴졌어요 저한테는. 근데 하지만 지금 좀 멀리 떨어져 있고 해서 어, 노스님께 어, 노스님이 한국에 와주신 거 굉장히 충격적이고 감동적이라는 말씀으로 제 감사의 마음을 전하고 싶고 또 노스님이 한국에 와 계시고 또 한국에 오실 수 있도록 많이 서포트 해주시는 한국에 계신 불자님들께도 멀리서 감사하다는 말씀 그리고 새해 복 많이 받으시라는 말씀을 드리고 싶습니다. So after I left Korea, I think about it. Um, at JMT, I was always staying behind, sitting behind Master Shincher. Um, at the time, I like to thank uh, Abbot Shincher, but I wasn't able to because I, I thought he was just a little bit embarrassed. I'm sitting behind him and start to saying thank you. And also, I felt that just saying thank you is just, just too light and too cheap for his contribution to Korea. So since I'm not in Korea, I'd like to say to uh, Venerable Shincher, uh, my appreciation and your support to Korea and your sacrifice. Also, all the Koreans who's helping Venerable Shincher to stay in Korea and supporting him, I'd like to thank them. And happy new year. Thank you. 그리고 마지막으로 이제 한국에 계신 아, 한국에 있는 저희 남편 그뭐 켄터키의 루이빌인가? 아무튼 거기 시골에 출장 잘 다녀오고 어 2월 7일 날 남편의 미국 출장이 끝난다고 들었어요. 그래서 출장 잘 마치고 DTT에서 마서지랑 반갑게 만나요. 어 새해에는 제가 좀더 산매력을 키우고 친절과 자비를 어, 키워서 좀더 찾게 질게요. 감사합니다. 이상입니다. Lastly, I'd like to talk to my husband. Uh, I hope you have a good trip at Kentucky, Louisville. Um, after your work, uh, February 7th, uh, we're going to meet at DTT and you'll be able to meet Master Z. Um, I promise for the new year, I'm going to start to work for my uh, increasing my samadhi power, and I'll be more kind and compassion and become a better person. Thank you. It's a weird way to talk to your husband on New Year's Day. <laughs> uh, okay, let me finish this slide here, and we stop tonight. So the next line, Buddhas manifest everywhere in 10 directions to speak the Dharma. This is what Buddhas do. They give. And the best way of giving, this is why the giving of the Dharma ranks number one, is foremost. This, this is the best form of gift that Buddhas do for us. They speak Dharma for us. All right? Uh, and for those of us who are not Buddhas yet, uh, I don't know, you Buddhas, I cannot recognize you, so that's why I have to be very careful. Uh, Buddhas uh, come in strange, uh, uh, weird shapes. Could Liam could be a Buddha, who knows? <laughs> okay, so, um, so, uh, so, Buddha, but since we're not Buddhas, okay, uh, be careful. Uh, don't speak Dharma too soon. Okay, before you have wisdom. 
Okay? Uh, don't be like the Asian who says uh, speaking Dharma, the giving of Dharma is foremost. That's nonsense. Uh, this refers to the Buddha and the people who have great wisdom. They speak Dharma in order to benefit us. Okay? Uh, and to guide us and to uh, free us from suffering. Uh, to help us end suffering, uh, attain bliss. That's why they're speaking Dharma. And you don't speak Dharma too soon if your Dharma, the Dharma you've spoken, has no track record of ending suffering and helping people attain bliss. Is the standard. Okay? All right. We stop here tonight. Thank you all. And Happy New Year. Okay.